and we're back. Welcome to another round of Squad Ops. Right, Tedish, still your commentator guys. for the evening. Round two yeah. of Scarecrow coming up here. We're still in the setup phase. It's going to take another couple minutes since it's kind of a complicated op here. If you're new to our game mode, this is one life. So you go down once, that's it. Medics can heal you, but no reviving. So if you're familiar with the game of Squad, um, yeah, we basically play that, except uh, limited in some regards. There's also, we don't play with any optics and a couple other slightly limiting factors. Um, just to try to, you know, channel all of the uh, the gameplay and uh, focus. That barely made sense, did it? <laughs> Sorry, trying to focus on a couple things at the same time. Alrighty, uh, let's see. So on this op, let's go over the op again, since uh, we might have some new viewers, and it's complicated. So, all right. Bringing up page one here. So the U.S. and Russian assets per squad are the same. You get two AR, one GO, one LAT, one Medic. Um, and the U.S. get to pick um, where they start. And for that, they get one Logi truck, one Humvee, and then they can throw down a FOB. They get one machine gun, and then once they resupply that FOB, they get another machine gun and mortar, or they can throw down two machine guns. You can't have both uh, mortar and machine gun or extra machine guns. The Russians get to choose two starts, one of two starts. Uh, they either get a, a BTR-80 when they start at their main, or they pick the forward start, uh, where we'll show you where they start there, and they get the Logi truck uh, with mortars and machine guns like we saw in the first round. Um, now you can see where the U.S. are setting up their defense base. Anywhere in that blue area, with one small exception, is they can't be at the mine entrance, if you're familiar with that. Um, so basically, they're setting up a FOB and then putting one squad at it, and then the rest of the U.S. team is, is en route to reinforce that with their Logi truck and one Humvee. Um, and if the Russians choose the forward start, they either start up in the north at Papanov or down south at the train station. As we can see on our map now, the Americans have chosen to put their FOB down northeast of mine entrance, so close to the Russian main um, and equidistant from the train station in Papanov. I think they're kind of assuming that the Russians are going to play the same way they did before, as a BTR, while a powerful asset, is not... It's not great on this map. I'll just say it. I, I think it's a terrible asset on this map because especially in this given scenario, you know it's going to be fighting in the trees. The BTR is just going to roll around the outskirts and really not going to be able to cover anything. Um, so while it is maybe a tempting option and I'd love to see someone play it, I can't, it's, it's a tough day for the BTR on this map. So I think the U.S. are planning on that. So that the Russians are going to be looking for them, so they're going to be going slow, and they should be able to get the bulk of their forces in to reinforce that fob that's right smack in the middle of the map. So we'll see what happens there. Let's fly over the U.S. defenses here and see what they've, how they've set it up, see if they go for more of a stealth option or whether they're going to throw their machine guns covering uh, the road if they can see it. They're not forced to build anything, but yeah, it looks like we've got a couple lines of sandbags up here. They actually blend in pretty well on this map. So even with binoculars, that can be tough to see. But it looks like they're just setting it up for an infantry push. Which which is really what this map is all about. It's not so vehicle heavy. Personally, I think the Russians get a slight advantage with their camo on this one. Americans have the tan camo. The foliage is really more green. The Russians on this one, I swear, you pick the right bush, you can just stand still and people will rock, walk right by you. Unfortunately, this one does take a little bit of more time to set up. Americans have to get into position. And then they're all ready. And then the Russians get to get into position if they choose the forward base like they did last time. So we'll see what they do. Looks like they might be doing a main start here based on these uh, these guys we see over here. Although they just might be in position to drive the Logis over to the forward start position. Oh, I 
haven't even been paying attention to their uh, their calls. Sightless, can we spawn our guys in? Here we got the uh, uh, Russian High Council. Hey, firm. Comparing binoculars. So, no. As they say they're set and ready, then yeah. Hey, firm. I hear the yeah, Russians have, have a pretty sweet glass. Uh, currently trying to investigate whether what do we got here? It's fucking conflicting reports. Okay. Enoch. 10 by 42. Alright, whatever. The detail in this is great. <laughs> also, BBC now, all the turds on the other side. I wonder if we can look down that. Oh. <laughs> okay, sorry, it's a little sickening. Kids yet. So we'll see how long it takes. Okay. So yeah, uh, we're experiencing a little bit of uh, new players going on here, playing some shenanigans. And that's happening because so we have two type of ops, types of op. Uh, we've got an open op, which is the first op of every Wednesday, which this happens to be. And then uh, the Saturday ops and every other Wednesday op is uh, not a closed op, but you need the SOTT basic training in order to participate. And that's just a 45 minute to an hour long training course lays down some basic principles, basic vocabulary to get everyone on the same page and make sure that everyone's on the same page maturity-wise to play in this. It only takes one one kid screaming and suddenly friendly firing all of his teammates to uh, ruin the game for everybody. So we try to make sure that doesn't happen. And uh, so far we had a great track record with that. So let's keep that up. But yeah, check us out on the calendar at squadops.gg. Figure out when that... Uh, next SOTT courses if you need to take it and then you can also figure out what ops are coming up next and uh, read up on them a little bit I think this month we have a I think every op this month is new the next one coming up I believe is called Nitro and I've cer certainly never run it almost positive it's new it's uh I believe it was on Cora which is one of the Middle Eastern maps uh something about bomb diffusal situation Bomb shacks. I didn't read into it too clear, closely, but it looked pretty good. Hey, you guys go ahead and just have you guys spawn in. They haven't fucking said they're clear, but they're not building anything else. Okay, cool. Oh, there we go. Now I know they are here. Cool. Yes, sir. Handsome. Um. Yeah, I just keep briefing our guys. I'm gonna look for a spot to do a briefing. Yeah, this is my house. No, no that was your first. Okay. No. No. I found a boat. Alright, over here, guys. Got some Halloween flavored uh, trash bags here. Uh, okay. Don't know. Don't know if that's a new little Easter egg in this house. I don't think I've noticed those anywhere else. All right, let me know when you guys are all duped and uh, done, and then we'll do platoon. All right. Jack looks like. It looks like the Russians are electing to do the main start here. Spawning all their guys here. Heard the platoon brief should be shortly. So that means they will get the BTR. We'll see how they use it. I'm skeptical whether it's going to get a kill. I guess it can. It probably will find the Humvee. Um, if they patrol that Humvee around. Although it, once they figure out, once the Americans figure out that the Russians have taken the BTR option, they'll probably just park that Humvee up near their base and use it as a uh, semi-static emplacement. Which is actually, in my eyes, the best the best way to use a vehicle on this map. Yep, so they just said they're going to use the BTR. So speed is key. 
Just get ready for me to call your name and then say get to the VCR. Will do. Russians should be briefing here shortly. Sneak in on that. Hear what the attack plan is. They're talking about their mortar <laughs> mortar blast from last game. <laughs> and Dermoplast with the most distinctive chuckle I have ever heard. Sounds like the US brief is going to go in. It's going to happen. Let's see if we can go in there and uh, Get him good. figure out what they're going to so, do here real quick. As you can see, we've put our fob on the same hill our, uh, our mortar fob was at last round. Uh, that hill is a commanding view of the territory around that this, that sector of the map. You can see all the way over to where their fob was. You can see all the way up hilltop. You can see all the way over here to Ammo Hill. You can see all the way... You, you can basically see 360 degrees about like half a kilometer out in every direction. So there's, there's no way the enemy can sneak on us or flank us without us noticing. How we're going to deploy our forces. Squad 1 is going to take the two vehicles. They're going to rush a reinforcement batch of supplies to the the attack or to the combat uh, operations base up there. They're going to get some some fit cals down. They're going to get the Humvee ready to rock and if we discover the enemy has a mortar fob, the Humvee will go patrol and attempt to destroy said mortar fob. Unless it's on a hill, in which case the Humvee will stay around the actual fob and uh, kind of drive around as a act as a mobile emplacement. But we'll we'll see how things go. Uh, in the meantime, squads three and four are going to run on foot. Everyone's going to take this path, more or less, to the fob itself. Try and minimize the amount of time you're out in the open, because if they go to the train station, they'll be on that hill very quickly. Obviously, we won't be as close as uh, they were to the hill itself, but, you know, I still have no interest in getting snuck up on up there all right uh so yeah after you get there you're gonna break out as follows squad one if we've made no contact with the russian forces we'll go to this location over here if squad one if we have made contact with russian forces coming from that location squad one will hang out kind of here online with squad two but just to the left of them squad three will hang out to the left of squad one unless squad one is off somewhere else squad three will just be by themselves kind of on this top then squad four is going to position themselves in this little nook and cranny down here to the right of squad two, who will be holding the defense point. If we figure the Russians are trying to flank us like we did to them, say they're they're going up uh, up here to stage their assault, they're trying to come from this direction, and they're or well, I, I don't know. There's really no good way to flank. The only way they can flank us is to come from this hill, and if they're doing that then that's what the command fire team is for. Command fire team is going to move a little differently than the rest of you. We're going to move along here and try to see if they're coming from Fob Papanov. See if they're maybe headed to Ammo Hill or something like that. And if they are, we'll call them out and we'll know to shift probably Squad 4 online over here with Squad uh, Squad 3 so we can have a kind of little platoon like that. And we'll probably put Squad 1 up there too and have them fall back as necessary. Basically, we'll just keep shifting squads around in response to enemy contact, much like they did, until eventually they either come in for the final assaults, or we kill all of them and we get that glorious red GG from the sky. Any questions? Hey, Pony, quick question. Once the brief is done. Sure. <laughs> Alright, so, so now we okay, are going to listen to the remainder of the and, uh, yeah, Russian briefing here. Hey, didn't you say hey, uh, initially? Did uh, I have a let's turn up there? pretty quickly. Um, again, you two rush it. Um, if you guys do find a uh, a fob or some fortifications on a ridge, make sure you use the flanks of the the hill. Don't 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 push across the uh, the top of the hill. Just pull to the the uh, the east or the west of it if it's going to be on that foxtrot line. Um, and again, you two squads are going to overwhelm that COP. Uh, if it looks like the COP is somewhere to our northwest or west, I'm going to position the BCR just to pick up a squad or two 
um, to push onto that COP as quickly as possible. Uh, it, it's really a matter, like a gamble, if 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 we find the uh, COP early or or not. But your squad leads are gonna find out pretty damn quick. So, um, is there any questions? Cool. Remember, the name of the game is speed. If you guys do see enemy contacts, kill them straight away. Uh, everyone's on free to engage. If you guys do see vehicles, um, make sure you know that there's probably going to be dismounts on those vehicles like we had last round. Uh, try and kill those vehicles as quickly as possible. All right. If there's no other questions, squad leads, break them out. Wait, I want to say something. Everyone, come here. Come here, guys. I want to hype the boys up before the game. Everyone, oh, come here. Crowd, come on. Bring it in. Bring it in. Have a talk. Have bring it in. Bring it in. All right, huddle around, boys. All right. We did good. Last round, we, ki we killed the filthy Russians. This time, we're going to kill the filthy American pigs. The way we're going to do it, I want person here to go into battle with the mindset that I'm going to kill 15 dirty Americans, okay? 15. I mean, 15 they... heads each. The boy. And remember, one thing <laughs> I want you guys to repeat after me. Don't take no L's. We don't take no L's. We don't take no L's. We don't take no L's. All right. All right. So on three, you ready? On three, we're gonna say it, and then we're gonna be prepared for battle. Ready? So one, two, three. We don't take no L's. We don't take no L's. Let's go, boys. Wow, that that was a might have been a squad house first there. A little uh, sub captain rally speech. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen so many microphones queued up at the same time. <laughs> All right, so we caught the second end of the uh, Russian brief there, but what you missed in the first half is that they're basically, they're going to use the BTR and shuttle people into this location right here in Echo 4. And then they're pushing straight up the hill directly onto the fob that the Americans have placed. So the speed is of the essence, aggression... Yeah, aggression, grenades, all that stuff. They're like, if you find a fob up there, throw grenades, get the fuck in there. There's only one squad versus our whole team, so we're going to run them over the whole time. So I take my words back. This BTR was is going to help them get there as quickly as possible, way before the Americans can possibly get there. And they're going to find it. There's no way they're not going to find that fob. So they're going to overrun it, probably kill everybody there, and then it's going to be you know, the U.S. team down a squad trying to retake their fob so we'll see how it goes but i'm uh expecting a quick american squad wipe there we'll see and yes you are correct kg beast btr can definitely force an entire hill to keep their heads down the problem is if they're two hills in uh, the BTR doesn't have any lines of sight on that. And, like, the lines of sight from the road, which is where the BTR is most likely going to be, it's steep up there, man. You really just you can't see. All right, we're live. We're, we're live. We're live. They're saying they're live. It looks like we're live. Yep, everybody's moving out. Let's see how this goes. Here's their one heavy asset on this one, the BTR, BTR-80. Nice heavily armored, at least so far until that M1 gets in here. And then, uh, of course, great offense, great zoom, great optics, carries way too many people, <laughs> too many eggs in one basket. Pretty strong vehicle overall, except on certain maps, not that useful. All right, here we go. Russians jumping out. Running each other over and pushing up that hill. So we're going to have contact here shortly. Pushing up. Here we go. There's those Americans looking down on them. Again, three and two push off the road to the northwest.
by us. I don't want you on the road. Get into the uh, the hill line. They're moving in hard and fast right. here. Who is this up front? Tactical Squad turtleneck. Squad four, the top of the ridge looks clear. Keep moving. They're moving, but they need to move faster. You can see that American line coming behind them. The American Humvee is paused to the north. Just a logistics truck, so that's only going to have four guys in it. American foot column coming way behind them. And the Americans are going to let the Russians get right up underneath them. Whether or not they saw them or not, they're going to be on top of them. Here we go. Here we go. And they're calling out contact at top of the ridge. Here we go. Grenades coming out. This guy, it's gonna hurt. Yep. Ouch. That was dramatic. Oh, 203 for good measure. Good flank coming in. Yeah, why didn't you shoot him? There you go. <laughs> There's one more. Copy, copy. Expert down. How's the squad lead up here? He's got one, two, three, four left. He ditches his grenade. You can check your own map for that. Whew. Drops him. Alright, so it looks like that uh, US Lodgy is reinforcing here. Meanwhile, we got the Humvee could be getting ambushed here in the northeast by Squad 3. Just kind of creep forward. I'm watching left. Here. Merrick's the gunner on the Humvee. We'll see if he can uh, spot the squad coming in on him from the uh, southeast. He's right there. Russians are sweeping this hill. A couple of them left. A couple US left. One, two, three, four. Four left alive. That's it. Americans are coming in close though. They're probably two minutes out. Humvee just engaged one guy. I think the Humvee just showed his stripes. BTR is coming in behind it. Ooh. These guys are all. That hill is swept. Oh, there's one left. And the hill is Russian. Rushed by the Russians. Humvee takes one shot. If that hit, Humvee couldn't tell if it was a con good hit or not. Humvee hit once. This is the call. Humvee's Second one comes out. Third one comes out. Just short. Keep pushing. Humvee taking evasive action around that. A little barricade Humvee's there in the map. In, He's bugging them. out. As he should. Don't turn around and back into that. I'm off the gun. So they're digging the radio. Keep that, keep that free six here there. And here comes the American reinforcements. They, wow, someone hit the Humvee. BTR sounds like he spotted something. BTR has got lots of targets on this hill. Oh, he spotted one, but apparently moved. 
There's a there was okay, I'll back in. There's a whole squad. American infantry's columns are coming in. Russians have spread out. Loose line here. Engaging from the high ground. Pretty good positions here. Using the old American positions. Mark them up with smoke. It's great use of the GL smoke right there. Calling out. Oh, they got contact close on their hill. Same with mine. So the squad that's left on this hill has got contact I'm coming in from the northeast as well as the direct west. I didn't hear any AK, sir. They got him right underneath them. There's that guy coming up defilade like I was talking about in the first round. You can probably get right up on top of that before they even know him. Oof! Gives away his position. Keep up pressure. Do you want Hit that tree above him with your 203. Yeah, Does just that. Close, Trades. Close north on All right, just a bit of a three. It was great use of the environment right there, hitting that tree with the 203. Americans getting up real close here. Americans coming up with force, retaking this. Who is this? Schmitty. Putting some damage in. Sandbags go flying, grenades going off. That's gotta scare the shit out of you. An RPG hits the sandbags right in front of you. Goes down. Starburst bursting that tree again. Different guy with same tactic. Use those ordnance. This guy is surrounded. No one knows his exact position though. A good soft cover, a good hard cover. Try and use that BTR effectively. Looks like command went down for the uh, US. And he disconnected, so the Russians now know. Oh, that BTR is danger close to enemy lads on top of that hill. Squad 3, just push past the BTR. Keep moving towards squad 1. Squad 2, good shit. Keep pulling south. Just keep hold down. More contact up on this hill. These guys are getting in close here. I've had this, this, this guy buried in this fern the past couple minutes. Oh, yeah, he, he sensed that. Starburst that tree. Nice! Starburst, airburst. Wow, gets three with that airburst technique. Very nice. U.S. suppressing with that squad automatic weapon. Grenades flying left, right, and center. Russians are down to three alive on the hill. Two. <laughs> Make that two. He's left up here. Just Satan. This is command. Versus a lot. Drops one. Gets dropped.
My squad is currently one strong beyond me. Attack who, who all, what, what commands are left? Uh, me. So now the <laughs> Russians took the hill from the Americans. Americans took the hill back from the Russians. And now the Russians are coming to take it back from the Americans. And this is all we got left, I think. Yeah, wow. Wow, the United States have lost 31 versus the Russians 17. That can't be right. And that's what happens when a Humvee finds a BTR. Yeah, BTR will. BTR took some hits. But ends up victorious, as you might expect, versus a wounded Humvee. So this is the last cadre of Americans here. Back at their original defenses. One, two, three, four, five, six left. Versus a spread out Russian team, but there are plenty of them. Keep some Oof. Tag from distance. Some bandages on that man. He just got shot twice. Squad two needs you up your ASAP. Get your pistol away. Come on. What are you gonna do with that? <sighs> Drops one on the ridge here. Server error. Server error versus LaRue right underneath him. Take some shrapnel in the ass. Falling back. Where did that come from? That must have been LaRue. Oof. BTR finds one. BTR snuck out of the uh, east. Got a decent position on that ridge to cover. Alright, I'm throwing a nade to the northeast. Russian coming in from behind. He, he can wipe the whole team right here. He's picking his target. And... Wow. <laughs> oh, that was... He got too excited there. Too jumpy on the trigger. Kid in a candy store. Couldn't pick what he wanted. So he only got one. Two Americans remain. Who we got left? Gonzo and Chip Hazard. I know it's tempting at this point to be moving all over the place like crazy, but when you move, you give your position away. Especially on a map like this. I mean, you don't have a lot of great options, but frantically running back and forth is probably the, the worst choice. At least this guy's a medic. Patch himself up. I don't think it's gonna matter. Oh! Right right in the neck. Brutal. I believe that is a game. Am I wrong? There's some U.S. hiding. Oh, there is one. Wow. Where did this guy come from? I thought this was a body. Who is this? Andrew Rock. <laughs> the lone medic. Getting this grenade out. It's going to be pretty short. BTR is still out there. A lot of dead bodies up here. Not a bad idea to throw a grenade and then move. But he still just gave his position away here. 
is a uphill battle, both literally and figuratively, for this guy. Sees one target. Tough shot. I just want to be clear about. I heard a grenade southwest. I'm pushing to investigate. Yeah. Rue just called out that grenade. Moving, moving that way to investigate, he says. Getting down to it. I'm sending out a bunch of reestablished comms in your Vic. Can you repeat? I said I'm reestablishing comms to the vehicle. Okay. This poor, stressed out medic. Figuring out the best approach here. I don't think there's a best approach. I want to see someone throw those glow sticks. A night map? How awesome would that be? Flares and glow sticks? <laughs> I'm assuming those are flares. <laughs> Maybe. I'm hearing they might be EpiPens. I, I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. Contact. Point blank. Oh. Contact north. Contact north. <laughs> That's the game. So that is round two of trick. No. What's the what's the op? It's not trick or treat. Scarecrow. <laughs> I knew it was Halloween. Something. It's round two for Scarecrow. Uh, this is squadops.gg. Website. And we got a command. We got one command or both commands in here at this point. All right, so we got best pony in here. A little uh, post-action debrief here. We can get his thoughts on both rounds. Is he still muted or we got him? You have me. All righty. So what were your thoughts on that one? Uh, That's first round, round, we did accept, well, on the second round, that was a complete and total military disaster. Uh, I chose the <laughs> tactically superior location, which is the highest vantage point on the map, with sight lines in 360 degrees, and Satan decided to focus his entire assaults on the most tactically valuable location, which is the highest point in the map with a 360 degree viewpoint. Yeah, so, their whole team descended upon one squad, wiped them out, and it was more or less impossible to come back. There was there was nothing to be done. Uh, they more or less just outguessed us. I, I was thinking, were you thinking uh, they're like, oh, they'll they'll probably go for the forward operating, you know, the mortar option as well. So yeah. So you put your you put your base right in the middle, exactly equidistant from both their starting positions, thinking that well, you'd have time to get in the there. I the idea was one of two things would happen. Thing number one. They would go for the mortar base, spawning either Fob Papanov or at the southern location. In this case, my troops and the logistic truck would reach the location first, and we'd be able to put up defenses. Thing two, they take the BTR, in which case the logistics truck should reach the location before the BTR and their infantry get there, and we can put down additional defenses and machine guns. What actually happened was the Lodgy driver took the wrong road and spent an extra 60 seconds dicking around in the middle of the forest, and so uh, did not arrive before the enemy infantry and... Uh, the fob was overrun. 
Oh yeah, they actually it was it was pretty ironic. Uh, in the team chat, the the squad uh, brief, he basically said, "All right, the BTR is going to move to this mark on the road, and then two squads are going to jump out of it, and they're going to move right up to this mark." And he put his fob mark down exactly on top of your fob. Yep, that's so, that yeah. sounds about right. Satan Satan correctly guessed where the uh, the best location for a fob would be, and yeah, got there first. So round one. Do we have Satan? Maybe we might be able to pull him in here, and get his impressions. But I am curious on round one. Uh, you pushed up, made contact real early, and then disengaged and went way around to the right. What was uh, what was your your thought process there? Well, as you saw in the middle and later of the round, if I'd continued to push in that direction, I had mortars coming down on top of my troops, and I had machine guns set up facing them. So uh, continuing to push the U.S. FOB from that direction at that point in time would have been a enormous strategic error. We got around to the side of them on the hill and set up our own mortar FOB first round with machine guns, and then went to work basically laying waste to their entire team. Uh, right before the final assault, we were up by almost two full squads worth of players but in the end it comes down to momentum and as we initiated our at attack uh the fob the attack fob ran out of ammo before the final assault actually started and we commenced with the final assault before the reinforcements had arrived and then when the reinforcements did arrive they hit it from the same location the initial wave hit it from so it was just it was down to execution and the, the final assault was just not executed very well yeah, as you you went down at some point before that, we noticed command yeah. comms got uh, deathly silent. Um, that was some excellent mortar precision work there on the uh, the ammo hill location. You cut that defense force in half with two mortars. It was uh, awesome to watch that. Yeah. So we've got Satan in here too now. I hear. Hey there. Satan, you with us? Yeah. So let's hear let's hear your thoughts on those rounds. How'd round one go for you? Round one was pretty fun. It was a uh, bit more complicated getting my guys out. Um, I knew our weakest side was the Southwest because Pony could have guys spawn at the uh, train yard, which uh, which he did, which he did have. So um, I had to shuttle some uh, some guys with a Lodgy just to get them onto a, a location to defend um, my COP. Um, so it was a good start. Um, really the, the mortars and the heavy gun did a lot of damage to us pretty exposed from that hillside to the uh, northeast where he placed his uh, fob um, but yeah uh, as Pony said uh, I was kind of expecting the momentum on his side to kind of fall apart when he tried to push into uh, the area I had set up with the CP COP um, so yeah it worked out in our favor it really came down to just a few guys so it could have went either way on the first round just was really exciting uh a lot of the times i was kind of just fighting for my life towards the end there um yeah that was the first round was a lot of fun a lot slower so uh i, I kind of wanted just to have round two as a a, a lot faster a faster round we did actually catch uh, you in one firefight there. I don't know if you knew this, but the guy fired a lat at your tree. Yeah, I saw that. The tree, and he killed himself with that lat. So that's where oh. he went, if you were wondering. I thought was... my grenade got him. No, your grenade killed his body again. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was that's, that's <laughs> a reaction. Perfect. Snap RPG straight into the tree, but it was too close to him and he killed himself. Well, that's good to hear him that terrifying. <laughs> so... <laughs> So yeah, then round two, uh, how did you come up with that uh, awesome guess, or was that all planned? That was all planned. Um, I knew if Pony put a, uh, a COP on the east side, he, his guys are pretty much all dead because I was going to overwhelm that with uh, two squads. That was squad two and squad three, uh, Jack and uh, Silent Death. Um, but he chose to go for the highest point in the map, which is a pretty good defend defendable location. But again, it takes a long time for uh, infantry and the Humvee Lodgy to get there. So I, I rushed two squads with my BTR just to uh, overwhelm that that hill um, so that the, uh, the guys of the COP would basically have no chance, which is exactly what happened. 
Um, we were wondering on that, Pony, if I can break in here real quick. So, Pony, did your guys report any contact before the Russians were on top of them? Uh, yeah, actually, they told me incorrect intelligence that the Russians were at Fab Papanov, which uh, oh. was definitely helpful. Um, because then what resulted from that was I believed the Russians were starting at Papanov and sent a Humvee to intercept their logistics and them as they were crossing the road from the hill at Papanov to the other hill and through the town, uh, which meant that there were an additional five people plus a M250 caliber armed vehicle that did not go to the Fab at live. Uh, and also that confused the poor Lodgy driver, which is why he, he took the, the wrong road off of live. <laughs> so that was unfortunate. But yes, that was, that was they reported that, and they reported as they were getting completely slaughtered by two squads that they were in contact. So they had basically a... said, they're all here, and then died. And then I was like, well, this is it's all over. Uh, but send in the troops! Try they had an the opportunity. Fob. From my perspective, which of course is easy to Monday morning quarterback here, but it looked like they had an opportunity to open fire while the Russians were still 100 meters off and slow them down, which might have given the U.S. main force time to catch up. But they weren't. Maybe they didn't have 360 security. I get maybe they just slipped underneath the in defilade. It's but, it's very uh, hard to see through those trees. I will say that's defending any location in this map is extremely difficult because the elevation variation is absurd. Like you could be a hundred meters away from you, the ground could be one hundred fifty meters higher or lower. Uh, it's it's very hilly and very noisy terrain. So, and there's all those trees and grass. So it, I I don't I don't fault them for getting snuck up on like that. If we if we'd gotten more people to the fob faster, I think we could have held it off. But yeah, Satan got there quicker. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. The guys at the COP could have done a lot of damage if they uh, spotted us on the south. I'm sure some guys must have seen us coming up there. Um, and it, it, it's kind of a weak spot there because the BTR has a, like in the location the BTR was in, it was it would have been hard for the BTR to uh, support the first squad to hit the uh, COP. But uh, I was just kind of relying on overwhelming any force, any any big objective there. That, that location the COP was on was basically just squad four killing anything on there if there was something or using that location to glass the uh, the Charlie Hill line where I placed my fob on round one. Um, but yeah, it turned out to go a lot quicker. It was definitely action packed. We saw some great grenades, uh, some great 203s as well. So yeah. Yeah, made me proud. All right, thoughts on the op in general? Scarecrow, this is the first time we've run it. Uh, Pony, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, I, I very much like the concept. I like multiple spawns. I like that there's a big honking area that you guys can set their COP in. I don't love the proximity. I, I wish, I, and I think since um, on the modding Discord today, OWI said they're going to have mod support out within a week, but don't quote them on that. I think this would be better suited for uh, a nice, large 4-kilometer, 8-kilometer terrain where you can have the U.S. have a big central area and then uh, Russia have to, to kind of come in and, and root them out. Uh, I do like a lot of the, the mechanics, but it, it kind of seems to be that the, the U.S. gets punished for moving very far away from their main with their, their main fob because the Russians can get to it first and overwhelm it. And there's there's not really, like, at, at some point there's a line you can cross where you just can't save your fob if the Russians get there faster because uh, if you're too far from your main, your troops are going to get there second and it's not going to be doable to win. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, it's a fun op, but just just that fact that if you have any anybody on the east side, like if you put your COP on the east side, it's 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 the most dangerous location you could put them on because it takes so long for the U.S. to arrive there. So if if we could run this op on a different map, like a more open map where vehicles can uh, utilize like getting to point A to point B faster, uh, the U.S. would have a lot of a buff because they would have the Humvees if they're against the uh, the Russian side, the Russian would just have a BTR too, uh, at most, uh, or maybe an MTLB. Um, but as a whole, it's a good map. But um, it's uh, it's it's definitely hard for the U.S. unless they use the the uh, the far western line on this map. Which uh, funny thing, Satan, I was actually going to take that hill myself until you took it, and then I thought, ah, well, I can't do the same thing twice. Oh uh, yeah, is a very good location. <laughs> 
Yeah. It is <laughs> it is definitely the most like tactically sound, but it's not always about having the best outcome, right? That's true. It, it was it was it is about about the experience, which is why I went for that that high point east, figuring I could uh, get there quicker. But I was uh, disastrously wrong. But it was still fun. Yeah, I'll bet. So yeah, the U.S. had it, got overrun, and then the Russians had it, and then they got overrun. <laughs> I bet both of the squads that were up and then re overrun again. So it yeah, will change hands uh, what four times in twenty minutes. A um, lot. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Like that. I'll bet it was fun for everyone that was up there, one way or the other. All right, awesome guys. Well, nice work all around. Um, I'm again, again, I'm Tedish, commentator for the evening. This is Squad Ops on Operation Scarecrow. Join us on Saturday for the next op, Operation Nitro. It's another new one. Uh, looks like a good time. Um, any hints on what we might see in that one, you guys? If you know anything about it, I didn't really have a chance to research it. Uh, Nitro. Um, yeah. Let's let's just say that there's going to be a lot of uh, bombs. Uh, yeah. Excellent. A lot of bombs. IEDs all the way around. Very nice. IEDs everywhere. Bomb scares everywhere. All right. Well, thanks again to all of our cameras. Of course, Pan the Man running everything behind every behind it. All the commands, everyone that joined. Um, come check us out. Squadops.gg is the website. Join us on the next one. SOTT. Just get involved. It's a great time. All right. This is Squad Ops out for your Wednesday night.